My guest in studio today is Mark Linderman. He is with the Wayne County Health Department, the Community Health Center. We have, Mark, it's been a while since you've been in. How it's been a minute, man. It's yeah. been at least several months. Several months since you've been here. And usually we have you in, and uh, someone from the Community Health Center shoots us up with flu vaccine, and that's great. Mm -hmm. But that's not all that, that you do. And so, a plethora. Of yeah, stuff. so we wanted to bring you in. And there, there's a lot of things to talk about. The place that I'd like to start first is about it, when it has rained this year, it has come down in buckets, and yeah. there's a lot of standing water. Something that happens at my house, I have a, a pot that I keep the garden hose in that doesn't drain, and whenever it gets full, I get all Zika paranoid, and I go, <laughs> oh, oh, and I dump the water as quickly as possible because sure. I'm worried about that standing water. Is that a concern this season? You know, when we look at Zika, Phil, I don't think oh. Zika is going to be a problem here in Wayne County for a few more years. Okay. What we do have is West Nile virus here in the county, and that's okay. been here for several years. And you look at the rain we've had, I think I was looking on the news this morning, we've had almost, we're almost a foot over what we normally have per year. And so when I'm going home or coming to work, there's still areas and fields that have not drained. And there's huge areas of standing water in the fields. And particular breeds of mosquito love that stuff. This is like a constant Right. buffet of food for them so they're not they're, they ain't going to go anywhere right is what i'm sure. saying and so right now you know with, with the flooding that's going on and with the water not receding we are going to have a huge mosquito mess here in the near future if we're not already there and so obviously that that brings up not only mosquitoes as a nuisance uh you can't go in your backyard anymore without mosquitoes being there and that's right. just not a problem localized, that's a problem everywhere within the county. Uh, but then we start looking at things like West Nile virus. And then we kind of forecast two, three, four, or five years down the road. And Zika, in, in my opinion, this is just my opinion, sure, it, it'll be a, it could be a public health crisis in America uh, around that time. Because we don't know a whole heck of a lot about Zika. Uh, we know how it's transmitted, you know, through a particular breed of mosquito. Uh, and also through sexual intercourse with those who are infected. And right now, the, the cases that we have in Indiana are people who have had it in the South and who have moved back in, to Indiana or travel to the South and, and come mm -hmm. back. So right now, it's not transmitting in Indiana, but given enough time, and you, you look at how less now virus spread throughout the country, it spreads a little different, it spreads sure. through birds. Uh, but you look at the flooding situations in, in the United States and the Southern states uh, and how that flooding can go come up, it's not unheard of in my mind that those mosquitoes can come up to breed with the mosquitoes we have here in the central states and start spreading. And so nature nature can find a way. So I think we're gonna have a have a real issue here in a few years. Okay. Well that's something to keep in mind. And that's <laughs> something that, that your office does. I mean I, I know that for people that may not know, there are sort of two really significant departments of what the Wayne County Health Department does. There is the Community Health Center, which is open to the public, anybody. Yep. It's not income-based. It takes all kinds of insurance. You know, I mean, it's... That's pretty rock solid. It's love really that. solid. I mean, it does. There's a lot of people that use the, the, the Community Health Center side. But then there's all the other things. So just like you were talking about staying aware of potential crisis situations, mm -hmm. food inspections. Correct. Um, well, can we talk about that for just Absolutely. a second? How how often are food inspections done? I, I back in the day, I remember there used to be like each month maybe a full report that was given. Mm -hmm. Don't necessarily see that anymore, but that doesn't mean you're not going out. No, no, we have four full time food inspectors. Really, and that's, that's a, for yeah, the whole county. For the whole county, we have well over three hundred food establishments in Wayne County. Wow! And so that's an all day occurrence for for these four individuals, and they are great. You know, we've had. We have one individual who's been with the county for 20 years, and his knowledge base is extreme. I mean, mm -hmm. He can go anywhere in the state and be a great food inspector. Um, there's three of us. <clears throat> I'm not a full-time food inspector myself anymore, but there's three of us who are standardized by the State Department of Health. Mm -hmm. uh, there's not a whole lot of individuals in the state who are standardized by the state. We go through specialized training for a lengthy amount of time to get that status. But yeah, it's a full-time job. Well, and we saw some stories elsewhere in the state where <coughs> some people have gotten really sick mm -hmm. um, uh, eating uh, out, not not in the Richmond or Wayne County area, but uh, in Indiana. So that 
that is something that needs to be monitored and, and food inspections need to be done. My question is, for for someone that doesn't know, that just goes out to eat a lot, difference between a critical and a non-critical? Critical violations are those things that are going, that have the potential to really make someone sick. Okay, just the potential. Just the potential. Uh, doesn't mean they are, but it has a good potential. Yeah. For example, hand washing. Um, you can just kind of count within an hour, maybe how many times you touch your face. Uh, and if you take that those unwashed hands and start working with food, or maybe someone goes to the bathroom and you, or you I, take money. Correct, money is one of the dirtiest things oh. we can handle. Keyboards and, and door handles are some right. of the dirtiest things we can handle. Um, and you and I have been in public restrooms enough to know not everybody washes their hands. <laughs> and believe it or not, you would think that someone working in food. Um, the reminders are all there. They're they're all there. We sometimes we just get lack of days ago. Yeah, um, sure. The temperature of which we store food can be a critical violation. The the way we store food, you know, things like we store chicken, raw chicken, on the bottom, right. not on top, because those juices can leak down and cause a real real problem. And date mark that. Sort date of thing. marking, you know, if you if you got something that, that's been there for a while, and not all food, you know, you can take like uh, a thing of salad dressing and keep it on the shelf forever, uh, versus raw meat. Right. You know, some things you gotta get rid of after a certain amount of time. But a non-critical is not the potential. It's just, hey, it's just those gross. things. Those th yeah. Oh, <laughs> it's okay. Just gross. All right. You know? Oh, well, that's good to know. Okay. It's, it's just gross. one of those things that you could lead to something. Correct. All right. Okay. Yeah, we look at non-critical. It it could be fairly indicative of other health practices. Yeah. Uh, and so we just need to keep an eye on that stuff. You are one of the experts in the state, maybe even in the country, with the type of knowledge that you have. By the way, Mark Linderman is our guest from the Wayne County Health Department. They have a great website, great Facebook and social media. You can follow them. I know that they respond quickly to messages, that sort of thing. Um, you have been involved in uh, community preparations for disasters and just being prepared for you know, being without power for a week, that sort of thing. And there is a class that is coming up in September that is open to Wayne County residents that can help them be more risk aware or be ready for perhaps to share that with us. What is sure. that class about? Well, when you look at preparedness activities in different counties, there, there are counties who outdo what we do, and there are count, we, we outdo what other counties do. Mm -hmm. We all have our specialties. Uh, my counterpart in Madison County, she is one of the, the state's best preparedness coordinators. For public health, and she's actually spoken at FBI conferences on, on her special wow. things. My specialty is crisis and risk communication. Um, I'm one of the few in the state who's been certified by the CDC to actually train people in that. I'm actually the, the, the liaison between the state of Indiana and the CDC for people who have issues with that. Um, I also work as a consultant for Vantage Point Consulting based out of Indianapolis, teaching classes for them. Okay. And I saw also people for the health department free of charge uh, for Wayne County residents. And, and I do that for Wayne County residents because I obviously have, if I'm a consultant for somewhere in Indianapolis, I have to sign a no compete. So that's all cool. Sure. Okay. So what I do here in Wayne County is part of my job. And so I'm a firm believer that communication at all levels <clears throat> is probably one of the most vital points to disaster prepar preparedness in the organization can handle. Okay. It could be a private organization, it could be a public one mm -hmm. like we here at the health department. Um, but unless you know how to uh, work with the media and work with your constituents uh, and getting the message out, you, you could be facing a real uphill battle during a crisis. Mm -hmm. And so what I like to do is train administrators, if, if I can, and that could be schools, yeah. colleges, faith-based, government, emergency response personnel like sheriff's department or police department. People that have have to work with a lot of other, Correct. their patients or, or constituents, customers are all large amounts of people. Correct. Yeah. And so unless you get that off the gate really quick, unless mm -hmm. you start um, looking at how to reach out to people very quickly and do it right, right, you could be in a real mess and your organization could face, like I said, a real uphill battle during a crisis. We use radio and we use... <coughs> uh, the scanner and speak out Facebook, uh, speak out Richmond on Facebook. That those don't work if they want to be power. <laughs> Correct. No. <laughs> so they, they, they so won't they, work. you probably need to have a few other steps in place and know what those are. <laughs> we do, and really, I think the biggest thing, Phil, is, and this is kind of what my thesis was on, 
you know, last year, mm -hmm. getting that message out prior to anything, you know, before the crap ever hits the fan. That's right. You've you, got to do that. You've got to build that base. Yeah. And, and, and rehearse it and practice it. Exactly. And, we, and we do see law enforcement, you know, a school shooting. Uh, they practice doing those kind of things. But those are less likely than a natural disaster that could take power out or right. communications out. And so if you don't have those systems in place, I would imagine that part of that job is also making sure that protocols are similar between police, sheriff, uh, county, city, schools, that all of them are talking the same language. And that's why, you know, most organizations like law enforcement, we have a public information officer. I'm, yep. the, I'm the PIO for Wayne County. Okay. Um, so I, I speak for all the county agencies. Did you get a badge with that? I wish I did. Wouldn't that be cool? It'd be cool if I got a gun, too, I'll, but uh, that, well, that ain't going to happen. No, so. okay. Well, they're, they're not going to do that. They'll just give you a radio. You just get one of those really expensive radios. radios to death. I understand, but I'm just saying, Mark, if you can have a badge that says, hello, ma'am, public information officer, you know, so. Um, they might laugh at me anyway. Well, that's okay. When, when does the class uh, take part? Well, can we share that information? Yeah, absolutely. With you? Okay. September 14th. All right. Um, okay. they're the, so far at the health department, we're limited to 22 seats. We're at 11 right now. Okay. Uh, it has the potential within the next month to explode or you know, just kind of stay stagnant. Can you not say explode when we're talking about natural crisis preparedness and communication? Let's use a different You know, I, I really, <laughs> I, I gotta be honest, dude, I, I really geek out with this stuff. I know you do. And and listen, you have this little thing, the wannabe prepper, um, which it is, is, a, is an idea and a concept that is still adapting and growing, but being prepared is a really big part of what you do. I mean, I'm sure that you have emergency kits in your car right now. I do. Yeah, okay. And a home. And okay, then you and have my, a backpack and you yeah. if if we have a serious problem here, I just want your address. So I can just <laughs> somehow get whatever gas and kids and you and, know, if it gets really bad torches and maybe I have a cabin or a bunk or somewhere else. Yes. I ain't gonna give that address to anybody. Okay, I understand. Just put me on the list. I just want to be on the list. All right. Mark Linderman, we can sit and talk to you all day. There's a lot of different things that uh, the Wayne County Health Department does. And one of the best things that you can do is follow them on Facebook and Twitter and go to the website, which is? WayneCountyHealth.com. There you go. All right. Mark Linderman, thanks for being on the show. We appreciate Always it. Always my pleasure.